These are my ladies. Oh, dude. here we go. <laughs> this is Jill. This is my Listen, lady. if you just realize what went into this right here. <laughs> my love for Legos, I'd always kind of did a little one-off stuff for it, but like this is a way of me personally showing like you know, my own collection in a sense. Like I lived in the gym and building them for the past 10 years now and I never really put them on display. They had just been in my house. What's up y'all? It's Miles Turner here, professional basketball player. It's my day off, man. I'm kicking with me. I'll just keep it straight with y'all. This is like only a third of my collection. I got a lot more shoes in Dallas and even more shoes back in Indy. But it's kind of like my reserve collection, if you will. A lot of my favorite pairs are here. So my day off shoes, you were just looking at them. They're either the Janoskis, I love low tops, or my low top ones. Like I can wear these anywhere. I legitimately have, honestly, I probably got like 40 pairs. Now I think about it, I got like two of like every color. So I wear these like everywhere. I would probably say half of the shoes in this closet I haven't even worn yet. Love all the original like KDs and Kobe's. These are one of the original pairs, like first ones I got. I still haven't worn these. KD, he was my favorite player growing up. You know, when I first came down into Austin uh, for a visit, he was here and he was just hooping with us and some of the guys and I'd be able to jump in on the game, be on his team. And that was my first time seeing like up close in person. It was honestly just cool, just kicking or whatever, just getting the hoop, man. It's like a dream come true for me. My rookie year, I got a chance to play against Kobe one time. He came to Indiana. It was like his very last year in the league. He was, he was on his like his Mamba tour and whatnot. It was his last. It was his last game in Indy. Our own home fans were booing us because that we won the game and Kobe was there, and uh, that was like one of the craziest experiences to me. But, you know, we won the game. We still got booed. That was kind of one of the coolest moments for me. Got shake up after the game, and that was only one of my only times meeting him. We all look up. Have my John Michael Basquiat up here. He's one of those guys who's a pioneer, like as far as street art's concerned. And um, you know, I'd always seen like graffiti and all that type of stuff, but I actually wanted to put a whole, dedicate a whole piece to him. And like, it's one thing to put it on like you know a wall or whatever. I wanted to have it on the ceiling. It's one of those things you can really look up there, and if you really look into it, it's like deep. It really gets crazy. It really gets deep if you start looking at some of the words on this and some of the tribal stuff he has here and what it really goes back, back into. Like, I feel like there was such a negative connotation to street art back in the day. It was like, oh, it's, it's thug, it's this, this and that. But there's a lot of beauty behind this. It's like a, it's not even rebellion. It's just the fact that you're able to come together and make something like this and like people can appreciate it. So um, these are one of the things I well wanted to stick out in the house. One of my favorite things here. <laughs> When I was younger, I used to just build Legos just to build them. I didn't actually build sets. I would just build like spaceships or I would build like whole like cities just out of just, like out of like my own creations. This is truly amazing. It's truly quite the spectacle. Big Star Wars guy, as y'all know. Darth Vader was one of my favorite characters growing up and I wanted to make it come to life. And the man who made it come to life is here. My main man, Echo. What's up? My dog, please right. explain to the people what went into this because I can try, but I'm an amateur at this Lego level compared to you, so <laughs> please, please. Yeah, I've been a professional Lego artist for uh, several years now, and a big fan of Star Wars. Same thing, Darth Vader, the Jedi, the whole folklore, the universe. This piece um, is about 100,000 Lego parts. Echo, he does incredible work. He does all this black expo work, and if you notice, a lot of the work he does is all just black Legos. Personally, my most difficult build was the Titanic, and you know, huge. I'm over here following like an instruction book, mm -hmm. 9,000 pieces. I can imagine what you've actually done yourself. This being 100,000 pieces, I'm sure you've done more. What was like your most difficult build? Wow, that's a good question. Usually it's the, the anatomical stuff because I, I do like pretty large civilization builds, like architectural stuff. The figurative work, which is like people and creatures, it's always the most challenging. I know like when I break one piece, I'm mm -hmm. living. So I'm not gonna go back a few yep. pages and actually yep. get it right. Like, you know, what goes into the handling of it? Like, have you ever just like been like halfway through it and just broke or like? Yeah, that happens. I mean, and you know, it's interesting. As much as it's frustrating when something breaks, it's it's actually kind of like a blessing because it shows to me that there's a structural weakness. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's just me being clumsy and drop it something. But yeah. even then, like if it drops, I prefer it drops and breaks in the studio. Mm -hmm. Cause then I can like examine where the weaknesses were and figure out what parts to make stronger. Yeah. There you go. I will never forget hey, man. this, man. Much appreciated, man. This is love. I appreciate all the time you put into this, man. How much, like, you said maybe like a thousand hours or something uh, like that? This one was 716 hours. I just checked. 
<laughs> it's very uh, therapeutic. I think that's the best way I can describe it. It's one of those things where I kind of just get some music on. Sometimes I just put my phone on, do not disturb, and just take that time to myself. You know, I, as much as I grind, as much as I put into my craft, um, you know, you got to work on yourself too. I feel like it's almost like a self care thing for me. So yeah, man, title, I've been following for a long time now. You know, middle school started for me. Like 2010 is really where the Odd Future wave came about. He really personified who like I wanted to be as a person in a sense. And watch his maturation from where he started to where he is now, like from the top of the hip hop games, where he's traveling the world, just doing whatever he wants to do on his terms. I just really resonated with that. And then obviously I love his music too. And he's got his hands in everything. He's got his hands in fashion, he's got his hands in art. I mean, he's got his uh, clothing line. Without further ado, y'all, this is my not so little sister, Maya Turner, right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's really, really influenced my fashion. I'll just send her, send her flicks and be like, yo, are you rocking with this one? She's like, eh, okay, well, eh, wear different socks or, uh, yeah, wear it's this hat with it. For sure. I've always been in fashion, though. Like, it's just always, it's how I express myself, so. I still have the mentality, it's just grown. And now I kind of just care about like them, my image and whatnot. And she's got me to kind of mature with that. We were always together growing up, like between uh, like 14 hour car drives. And yeah, like, I'm, I'm just, I was always with them. So it, we had no other choice but yeah. to be close. When I left for you know the league and whatnot, like I missed basically your whole yeah. teenage years in a sense. So me and T, I really never cared for golf. During the pandemic, you know, he grew up, you know, golfing a little bit, just, messing around and he actually really got me interested in it. But I never I never had like I never went like a whole 18. But all we would do is like uh, me and my homeboys would sneak onto the golf course like in our neighborhood. You know, play like two or three holes at nighttime and stuff like that. We just learned that way. So just for the records, I am an animal lover. We are hitting biodegradable golf balls. The lead on the actual golf balls it can be very toxic to the fish, toxic to the environment, so we make sure we pay attention to little details. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out other Days Off episodes.